Let me show you how to embed a Jetty web server into a Java application and use it in combination with web pages that get refreshed thanks to HTMX. I created a small demo application to show you how you need to configure Jetty, the web server that you can embed into a Java application so you can interact with a website through HTMX. HTMX allows you to replace parts of your web page with a formatted HTML code that is returned by your web server. I have two uh, web pages included. One is just using uh, get and post uh, co uh, communication uh, through REST APIs. And another one is using WebSockets to communicate with the backend. Both are included in the same application. Um, it's just a minimal ex uh, example, so you can adapt it at your own needs. It's just a way for me to show you how you need to configure Jetty as I, as I was looking uh, into doing this for myself for a project. And I found out that a lot of the documentation was a bit outdated and was still referring to Java X packages, while all of them uh, are now replaced with Jakarta. Um, let's dive into the code. This is a Maven project that you can find on my GitHub. It has an application and what the application does is just start the web server on port uh, 9999. So if you go into the web server, uh, um, there you see that I have different resource handlers. So what we first need to do is uh, configure and start our server uh, here and set the port so that's the 9999 that we will be using for this demo and we need a code text handler collection and in this collection we can add uh, multiple handlers and that's exactly what i've done in this uh, demo and you can choose what you want to use uh, for yourself so there are three here uh, the first one is a resource handler i want to expose the web pages and CSS that are included in this project. You can find them in the resources here in this web directory. You see that I have two HTML web pages. I have an, M an image as a demo and I have a few style sheets. So all these files need to be exposed by the web server so that I can load them in the browser. And that's what's handled here in this resource handler. So you see that uh, I define the, the directory where everything is located and then some configuration to add this to the context handler. Something similar is done for REST API uh, endpoints that I want to expose. So they are living in the REST path and then uh, I have two services that get exposed. They are here. So the first one is just uh, a list service it returns a list item a formatted html string uh, with the current timestamp the text service is using the data faker library uh, it's a very nice library that can create random addresses and names and lists of people for instance but in this case i'm just using it to uh, create some lorem ipsum text so that's some random text that's being used uh, a lot of times uh, by marketing agencies when they f are formatting a, a letter or an advertisement and they don't have the text yet. That's what I use lorem ipsum. It's, uh, it looks like readable text, but it's just uh, nonsense. So again, here I have a get and a post. So those are rest endpoints that can be used by a web application. Now, if you go back to the web server, there is a third handler that's being defined and that's the WebSocket handler. And actually that was the one I had to search for the most to get it configured, but it's quite simple. Uh, if you have the right dependencies in the POM file, of course, everything is here in this project again. So you have the basic Jetty server and logging, but you also have these WebSocket dependencies that are included. And as you can see, is the Jakarta WebSocket that we are using. And then we have here a WebSocket endpoint, and that is implemented by this uh, my event socket. On this uh, additional endpoint, you see here, it has some uh, specific code for this example, so uh, it can answer on an echo request. So if you send a text message over the WebSocket with echo, it just sends back the message with the echo being removed. And then it has some custom 
uh, implementations for specific actions that I want to do on my HTML pages. So actually, this is all the code that is here. There's one thing more, a status sender, and that's just sending a text back to a, a WebSocket connection. We will see later what this exactly does. Okay, uh, what I've also done here in IntelliJ, um, if you go to the edit configurations, I find this a very easy uh, thing to, to use if you're developing something like this. So we have the standard build uh, of the application, but I added two uh, launch uh, actions here. So these are actually uh, opening Safari with my two web pages that are exposed by the application. So if we now run the application, we get Safari and you see that we have these two uh, pages. The first one is an index page. Um, it shows a button and if you click on the button, the button is replaced with such a lorem ipsum standard uh, random uh, text. And if I click on the other button, you see that we have here a list. I can add additional list items. So each time I click on the button, a list item is added. We also have a form. So if I put my name here, submit, then it, the form is replaced with another text. And you also see that we have the image which was included in the resources. So the web server is actually providing all these, the CSS, the image, uh, also the web page. Now, if we go to the WebSocket example, we have a similar page and it has similar actions. The, the biggest difference is here. You see that every second a timestamp is pushed from the server back to the interface. So here we see that the WebSocket is constantly connected and getting data from the backend. And again, here we can replace the text of the button and we can replace this paragraph. So the difference is between these two pages, this is using REST APIs and the other one is using a, a WebSocket connection. So let's look into the HTML code of these. So if we go here, this is the normal page using the REST APIs. You see that we have the HTMX JavaScript library included here. And what, how HTMX is working is actually you extend some of the uh, HTML components like this. So this button has an uh, get defined and also what it needs to swap. And by using outer HTML, we are actually asking HTMX if you receive something after I have clicked on this button, then replace this whole block. And that's actually what we have seen. The button was replaced by a text that we got from this uh, REST service. So and let's check what we actually get from the server if we do this. So this is the API endpoint rest.text. You see that we get a random lorem ipsum text, but actually what we get from the server is more than just text, it's actually a paragraph. So it has a P tag. So the server is always returning formatted HTML. And we can do the same with the last service. You see that it actually returns a list item, which is formatted. So we can just add it to the HTML page and it will be formatted. Uh, as we expect for a web page. Okay, so that's what we have here. So if we go a bit further here, we have the form. Again, the form, it's doing a post request to the text API. Again, we ask it to swap the outer HTML. So it will replace this whole form element in the HTML page and it will replace it with the result from this API, which as we have just seen is a P paragraph with some content uh, and it has have your name because if we go to the text service, if it receives a post command, it will get uh, the name from the request and add it into this formatted answer, a P with hello and thank you for using this demo. Now let's look at the WebSocket page. So this is uh, HTML. We have an extra JavaScript dependency, the WebSocket extension of HTMX. 
we need to configure it. We can do that in the body. So we say that this extension should be used and also the endpoint where we want to connect uh, the WebSocket to. Uh, by the way, you can always uh, test a WebSocket uh, connection, uh, for instance, in Firefox with this uh, WebSocket uh, uh, test extension. Uh, you see that I have here the address of my uh, local host 999, and this is the endpoint. So I can open it. And as soon as it's opened, you see that it receives a time st uh, stamp paragraph uh, every uh, second. And we can also do um, a test. So there is an echo uh, implementation there. If we send this, then the server answers. Let's close this. The server answers with the message that we've just sent without the echo. So let's try it again. Something lower sent. So again, the server has answered with the text without the echo. Good. So, um, and then what happens uh, in the HTML? So for the button, we have again, the swap, we wanted to replace the outer HTML. Um, and what we do here is we use the VS send, so the web service, uh, WebSocket send, uh, and it will do exactly the same, replace this outer HTML, this button element, with whatever it receives uh, through the WebSocket. And here the ID is used. So you see this ID, this ID is sent as a message here. So that's what's being received on the server side. And we can check if this message contains uh, replace this or replace below, and then answer with something that we want to be uh, displayed. You see, this is just a very simple uh, implementation. Of course, you can make this a lot uh, more complex, uh, implement certain uh, actions you want to assign to a button and reply with, uh, this has been uh, done in the database or I re received this data from this other service. So you can just format it uh, as you wish and return it uh, to the web page. And I've done some other things here. Uh, all for you to experiment. And what you actually see here is uh, when the page loads, it has a paragraph with the ID connection timestamp, but it is empty. And because this ID here is sent by the web server every second, it actually replaces the already existing HTML element with the same ID. And you see here, this, it has a timestamp. So that's what's uh, being shown uh, on the website. Good. Um, so you've seen that I've run this from uh, IntelliJ. What you can also do because uh, yeah, it's a Maven project. And if we go uh, to the POM file, you see that there is uh, the Maven Shade plugin is used here to package it. So we can uh, package the application can find it in the target directory and I can execute it from here. Uh, jetty. Okay. You see that it's running again. So let's request a page. Add a new list item, replace paragraph, go back. So you see, this is the message that's being received through a WebSocket. It's actually adjacent, so you can parse it. It has some headers and you can use this uh, to handle a WebSocket request and send back the correct uh, action. So you see that it triggers, uh, the trigger is based on the ID of the element that has uh, done this, this WebSocket request. Uh, and you can use that to define what you exactly uh, want to do. Okay, I think I've shown everything. So this is a very simple demo. Uh, my main goal was to provide you with the configuration to have both a resource provider uh, through the web uh, service so that you can uh, uh, serve these HTML files, image files all coming from your jar. The second thing was uh, providing an API so that you can do uh, REST calls uh, to, uh, via this uh, Jetty web server. And then also the WebSocket if you want to use WebSocket communication between your client and your server, that it is configured here and that you have a My Event Socket 
um, class that can uh, manage those WebSocket requests and reply uh, with whatever action that is needed uh, for your application. Uh, have fun with the code. Uh, it's free on GitHub, of course. Um, if you find something that can be improved, please let me know uh, and we can work together on this so that it can be a very useful uh, starting point for everyone who wants to use uh, Jetty uh, combined with HTMX.